as you can see and probably hear, London is waking up around us. We're at Walthamstow Reservoirs and I'm fishing the lower main R today and I'm really keen to get going. I've been peering over, I haven't seen anything show yet, but with any day fishing, it's really keen to get on the lake quickly. So as soon as the gate's open, I'm gonna load the barra and get over there. With any long journey to any lake, you're always excited in your mind, you're thinking, oh, it's gonna be big winds, fish showing everywhere, and then you get here and it's like, eh. <laughs> But I've come to the far end where later on, it is due to blow south, southeast up here um, and a low pressure and a bit of rain as well. So I'm kind of second guessing they'll be here. The good thing is with this swim as well, you can see the whole lake. I did have a look at the other end on the road bank, didn't see anything. Um, and then as I stood here, ones were sloshed out straight in front. So I'm gonna get the rods out. Well, that's two rods out, one where I've seen that fish show, one in the corner where I've seen a bit of fizzing. I'm going to get this one ready and hopefully see another one show. So this morning the, the wind can't seem to make its mind of what it's doing, it's a little bit flat to be honest, but um, in the next hour or so that was one. That was definitely one. Um, that's the first one I've seen for quite a while. Um, but now you can feel it, it's picking up. A little bit of rain in the air. And then I think in the next few hours it's really coming in. So, so that's a very good sign. All right, well. Very little has happened in the last few hours, which considering the weather is, is quite surprising. And looking along the lake, thought I'd seen one, carried on looking for a little while and then seen another one. So I'm gonna pack up quickly, get all the rods in and run over there now. Right, so we made the move. Um, and the wind swung typically. Um, it, it was forecast too, but just a little bit later than normal. So I've moved down on the wind and I've literally seen three in the last few minutes. So I'm gonna shut up and get the rods out. Well, that feels a lot better. I was a bit despondent about an hour ago, stood there pouring rain, thinking this, is, this isn't gonna happen, and then came along the bank, and they're literally 30 yards out max. Seen probably five shows, got three out there, but I do think they're moving down. Um, funny enough where I was <laughs> first of all this morning, but we'll have to just keep chasing them. So I'll give it an hour here, and then see what happens. It's one of those is seeing them put put rigs on them and then now you want to keep seeing them because they could so easily move off.
get in. That will do. First one, hopefully of many. Looks a nice one too. And there we go, and as you can see, the rain's set in, absolutely soaking, but uh, yeah, very, very happy. A few ounces under 30 pounds, and what a lovely carp too. So special, this place. And as well, just as we're getting this one out, two more fish showed out there, so it's looking good for the evening. <laughs> what an awesome carp. I mean, when you when you got low pressure, strong wind and rain, you're rubbing your hands together, and it is amazing conditions. But sitting out in it all day is wearing thin. But the fish were close. Obviously caught one, um, and I've seen a few a little bit further out now. So what I'm going to do? I'm skipping the rods in. Going to put them all a little bit further out. I'm going to put some bait out as well. They're not showing as much. I do think they're around, but. Coming into the last few hours, I want some food out there to hopefully draw them down, so I'm going to get these sorted now. Well, that's it for today. Um, the rain's come back in again. It's been relentless all day, but we're back tomorrow to see what that brings. The lower main yard's around 19 acres in size and feature-wise, it's very barren. It's really silty like most of the reservoirs here. The main thing is finding the fish. You can turn up on the gate and it's fair, you know, there's not someone sat in the point swim or bucketing swims. You turn up, as long as you're early, you can walk around, find the fish. And being quite open, they do respond well to, you know, weather changes, low pressure, strong winds. And the mobile side as well, you're not just jumping in a swim, camping, you know, you've got to be looking all the time. It's very, very draining, but it's good fun. You put the effort in that you can get the rewards. Well, good morning, and what a completely different contrast in the weather than what it was yesterday. It's, as you can see, bright blue skies, um, but we have got a southwesterly coming down this end, and it's, it's due to get stronger later on. I've don't know, been walking for about an hour now, haven't seen anything show. Um, so the plan is just to keep, keep walking, although obviously on this wind now, you, you would like to think that later on they'd get down here, there's a few snaggy areas where you can fish closer in, obviously with the weather how it is. So yeah, the plan is just to keep walking and hopefully see a sign of a carp. All right, so been sat looking at the lower Maynard for well over an hour now and 
nothing's really happening. Well, there hasn't been any shows at all, to be honest, from what I've seen. And as we've stood here, some of the crew have just noticed the fish is just shown in the higher main art, which is just behind. And I don't think there's many fish in there, so you can obviously fish them all, so I'm gonna get a rod out. I think that was another one. Just flick that one out and then another one's just showing. It is very deep from the drop I've just got then, so they could well be just playing up in the rock water, but there's fish showing there, you've got fish room. Two rods on two shows. It is very deep, like I say, so, and with the weather how it is, but there's fish there, so it's quite exciting. Across Wolfenstow, there's, there's so many different lakes to which each one offers something different, but you're, you're constantly spinning the wheel where, you know, there, there could be chances and opportunities everywhere and you've got to be looking, you know. I wouldn't expect to be fishing the higher. Didn't, you know, my intentions weren't to come and fish here, but when there's fish showing, you've got to act on it. But now it's constantly thinking, where, where's your next move? You know, the, it, it's, it's forecast to be sunny all day, strong southwesterlies. They're, they're sat in open water in the higher, in deep water showing. It's, you know, where, you wouldn't expect them to be. And then behind me in the lower, then you've got the wind pushing down this end and haven't seen a thing. So, yeah, we'll see. If they carry on showing here, I need to act on it. More so, maybe put a little bit of bait out. But yeah, you're constantly thinking what your next move is. Being active can really pay in this, this style of fishing. You know, you've always got to be looking, and the beauty of it is, you know, it can, it can happen at any point. The weather keeps changing all the time. You know, it might only be a small window when they're feeding, but you've just got to get on them, get rigs there. As long as you're on them, you can get them at any point. Believe it or not, it's now past midday, and I'm still yet to cast a rod out in the lower. Um, like I seen earlier, we had a, a small window of opportunity on the higher, which didn't expect, but got to make the most of it. And then I've been stood on the, the causeway, so you can basically see most of the lake, and I've done a few laps and been up and down, and yeah, it's kind of exhausting. <laughs> but we have seen two. When we're over there, seen two in, on the end of this wind now, which like I said earlier on, did kind of, you know, if you turned up now, you'd, you'd be rubbing your hands together with this wind. So just now trying to really pin down exactly where they are before I'll get some rods out there. And a bit of bait as well. I think I'm gonna put some bait out for this evening. I've been sat down there on the end of the wind for a good few hours now and finally one shown. So the rod over my shoulders on that, got a handful of bait over it as well. So before this one goes out there, I thought I'd show you what you're using. I've opted for a helicopter setup. Now, like I've mentioned before, all of the reservoirs here are really silty. So I don't want a leg clip or an inline setup where that would pull the rig in. So how this works is the lead will go into the silt and then that will move freely. And obviously depending on how deep you think the silt is, is how far you can pull this lead core safety top bead up. Now with that, if you are unfortunate to get a break off or, or anything might happen, then that bead will then pop off and the fish is free of the lead core. Moving down to the lead side, 
got the new buffer bead and under there you've got a six pound C clip. So that's attached there to a heavy ring. So I've gone for a six pound because there's not really many snags here. There's a bit of weed in the edge, but not, you know, unless something drastically happens, I'm not needing to drop that lead. And I'm using about two and a half, three ounce leads to get out there. So that simply just pushes over nice and neat and minimal. Moving on to the rig section, got the double ring swivel there, about six, seven inches of cam stiff, and then it's broken away. And then hook arrangement is just a rig that I use a lot in my fishing for balance baits, half pop-ups. Um, used it last time in the insights. Got size four curve point, hook ring swivel, and then hook bait wise, I've got a trim down tough one. Topped off with a trim down mulberry pop-up, and then I'm simply hooking on a small bag of boilie crumb as well, and then dipping it in some canless liquid. So I'm gonna get this ready now, hopefully see a fish show and get it out there. sat there then. Uh, I've got two rods out there and then one's just shown to the right but a little bit closer in. So I'm just gonna get this one rigged up and get it out there. So literally in the last half hour, they've just started showing where I've just said this right hand rod I put short. And literally 10 minutes it's gone. And it hasn't surfaced yet. And it's gonna do me in this weed, so I'm gonna concentrate. Has it done me? I'm just gonna have to scoop it and hope there's a fish there. Is there a carp there? Now yeah, I can see a tail. <laughs> I think there's a fish there. How bizarre. Well, I know that might have sounded ridiculous, but there's a massive ball of weed. I'm sure I've seen a tail sticking out, but where it is there, I can't get in. So I'm just gonna pop the waders on and uh, yeah, see what we've got. Oh, there is a carp's tail. <laughs> Literally, as soon as he got his head in this loose bit of weed down here and he just gave up, which is good, but then also a little bit strange. Oh, he's a lovely carp. It just shows that it can happen at any point. Literally sat here, quite despondent, the odd one showing, and then it just came alive. Put this rod out there, closer in, it's a much better drop, a lot shallower. And yeah, it's ramped off and I've got a very nice old, Wolfenstow carp in it and I'm absolutely buzzing. There we go. Look at that old dinosaur. An awesome old carp. Mad to think, I didn't even think it was there. <laughs> Just a ball of weed, but what an amazing carp. £32 this one, and if earlier on when we sat there all despondent, not seeing anything show, if you said I'd catch one like this, I'd be very, very happy. There doesn't seem to be any sort of pattern in how the fish are acting at the minute. It's like you've seen nothing for an hour or so and then all of a sudden one or two will show. So I've just seen two, a little bit longer, so I'm gonna get that left hand rod in, fresh bag, a couple of baits over the top and see what happens.
right, the, uh, the lake's coming alive now with carp activity and anglers. It's uh, obviously a magical period now. Fish are showing and anglers are turning up and they're on it as well. So I'm contemplating a move, but one's just shown again in my water, but, but a little bit longer again. So I'm going to put this back out there, get the things packed down and then, yeah, possibly be on my toes. Because of the nature of the fishing I'm doing here, obviously being mobile, moving on to fish, you know, I'm not wanting to clip up a spot and get a spot going. Um, so I've gone for the boilie approach, straight boilie. So because it's really, really silty here, like I've mentioned before, I've rehydrated the baits with lake water. I'm using manila. Um, so I've got some cloudy manila and some canless liquid in there as well. So pumping off loads of attraction, but each time rod goes out, seven to ten baits um, and then you know if I if I get a bite off one spot and then it looks like I can get more and more and more I'll obviously put more bait in but at the minute it's just enough to get a bite. Well, although the wind's still hacking down that end, there's a lot, like I said, there's a lot of fish showing long, but they've suddenly started moving back up the lake. Um, so we've come around the opposite side. And as I've got round here, one's just showing straight in front. So clock's ticking because we've got, I think an hour and a half before we've got to be off. It is black with them. <laughs> and they're literally 20 yards, 15 yards. Very exciting. How exciting is this? It's like you sat there thinking, well, they might be there, they might be there, and then all of a sudden, all guns blazing, everything's one big rush and you just feel fresh again as soon as you're in a new swim you get on fish it's just magic What we thought was a bit of a bream bite, just bobbing, just lifted up and down. I tried to tighten up to it, it was still slack, lifted into it and fish is, it was basically just kiting straight left, like it's doing now. <laughs> Absolutely blinded by the sun and it kept going over my other lines. Even though I've got back leads on, I'm going to get to him down here. Are we in? That was a palaver, but we've got him. There we go, the wind's picking up, the fish are still out there, and this little pristine common has made the mood worthwhile. It's absolutely mint.
Wolfenstow is so special and unique in so many different ways. I mean, when you set on the gate in the morning, you're watching everyone commuting into work and you're coming to this beautiful, picturesque place surrounded by towers and Canary Wharf and Tottenham Stadium. And yeah, it's, it's, it's certainly different in so many different ways, but really enjoyable as well. There we have it, the end of two fantastic days, but hectic, tiring, but more than worth it. A long drive back now, so looking forward to getting back.